And the blood of Christ is going to get you out of nothing. You've rejected the word of God that told you about the blood of Christ. And you've rejected the testimony of the Holy Ghost that you're talking about. It is the Holy Ghost who wrote that book. No prophets have been in prime interpretation. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And brother, will you pretend that Acts 2 is 1 Corinthians 14 and 1 Corinthians 14 is you up in a prayer room going la 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 You're not going to get deceived. You're over the cliff and gone. How do you know you haven't committed the unpardonable sin already? How do you know you haven't blasphemed the Holy Ghost if you don't know what you said? You say, well, I just have faith in God. Well, most optimists are in the insane asylum, the real ones. People every day poison themselves that have faith to believe it's born of seltzer when it's not. People die of blood transfusions every day who get the wrong kind of blood but have faith to believe it's the right kind of blood. There are people every day that go to New York thinking they're going to Philadelphia and go to Los Angeles thinking they're going to San Diego. So what? Page 127, quote, to bring forth the gifts of the Spirit takes God and the believer working together, each doing his own part. The Lord working with them with signs following. Oh boy. You know what this is going to prove now? She's going to prove now that you have to work up the gift of tongues by blubbering in a prayer room. Why, that is what Mark 16, 20 is about. The Lord working with them, the apostles with signs following, is the apostles going out there and preaching the word of God and praying and healing folks and telling the truth and God bearing witness to it. When he says the Lord working with them, there's nothing there about the apostles holding hands and taking deep breathing exercise for yogi to get the demon in the bottom of the obeth, you know, the uh, water business to pop out of the bottle. But look what our writer now says, quote, and so you too must believe and take the step of faith by raising your voice and speaking syllables not in your known language, and the Holy Spirit will make the water hard under your feet. What? <laughs> I mean, did the H and W get all of them? Quote, you must raise up your voice and speak syllables not in your own known language, and the Holy Spirit will make the water hard under your feet. Well, what will I enable you to do? Walk on the water? He will imperceptibly give you the utterance as you do the speaking. Quote, keep in tongues. This is where so many go wrong when they say, if God wants me to have it, he'll give it to me with no faith or action on their part. What's he saying? He's saying what you need to do is... What's he saying? He's saying what you need to do this trip in the nervous system and the central nervous system become disjointed and the motor responses from the pit of the stomach unhinge the tongue and the tongue begins to blabber. Is this how the apostles got the gift of tongues at Pentecost? Is this how Paul got them? Are you trying to tell us that Cornelius' household in Acts chapter 10 is out there and while Simon Peter was preached to them they went before they began to talk in tongues? What are you trying to say? Page 129, quote, The Holy Spirit did confirm to me that he was supplying the syllables I was speaking by giving me a couple of words which I understood. These words were Papa, which I knew meant Father. Yesu, meaning Jesus, I'm sure, and Yeshua, which is the Hebrew for Jesus. I discovered some time later. However, God may not give you any words that are familiar to you. Quote, You may instead feel the Holy Spirit move upon you physically. Really? How is that when the flesh and the abomination he doesn't come upon the flesh and won't touch the flesh in this age and won't even save you to your circumcised and cut loose from it? Colossians 2, Romans 8, Romans 6. Quote, You feel the Holy Spirit. Perhaps your throat will tighten or your lips or tongue will quiver. You may suddenly break out in goosebumps or start over to tremble. God may simply give you an inner witness that you are praying in the heavenly language or some other confirmation which he will special and just write to you personally. If you have no feeling as you speak in tongues, you must not doubt your experience. If you don't give acknowledgement the reality of your experience, you will never be able to recognize it as being authentic. You will not receive the blessing from it that you may be looking for. If God has only given you one word or one phrase in tongues, which you say over and over again, you may see no need in saying it since it's always the same. However, let me encourage you to use whatever God has given you and say it often. 
Now, did you know some of us who lived on the sea for 27 years know what we're reading along about in here? We're reading about how hypnotism produces a passive state by what we call a riff or repetition. And those of us who know much about demonism or gurus or chalas or meditation know that this is the technique for producing a spirit medium. This is the technique for going into the seance or the necromancer calling up the spirits. The routine is identical. It can be checked in the Encyclopedia Britannica. Quote, you may try branching out your vocabulary of tongues by deliberately and consciously speaking new syllables in faith, believing them, to, believing them to be prompted by the Holy Spirit. At any rate, God will surely give you more words in time after your faith is tested and speaking faithfully what he has already given you as long as you become more released in the Spirit. Chapter and verse? Not one chapter and verse in anything I've said. God didn't tell any Christian to pray in words he couldn't understand. God didn't tell any Christian to hub 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 repeat a syllable. God told you to receive nothing that you got that way unless you tried the spirits first to see where it was from. Why have you disobeyed God? The whole operation is built on one, physical feeling, and two, believing that these feelings come from God. That is the satanic gospel. If there was a full gospel, that's it. It's full of the devil. Page 133. Talking tongue is the power, gives you the power to live the Christian life. Chapter and verse, none. Page 134, quote, your new tongue will give you a restful release of your spirit. Chapter and verse, none. Page 137, in full gospel meetings, the gifts of the Spirit will be allowed to operate. Chapter and verse, none. When the opening is made in the service to bring forth your message in tongues, stand up and speak distinctly. Really? The writer of this book is a woman, Carol Hyden. Didn't you read in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, the entire chapter dealing with tongues, in verse 34, let your women keep silence, the churches? What does this young lady mean, saying, when the opening is made in the service? Stand up, so the people in the congregation can hear your voice, page 138. You better hadn't, you blasphemed, disobedient rebel. God told you to shut your mouth and sit down. 1 Corinthians 14, 34. Now this brings again the problem up we mentioned earlier. The basic problem of the charismatic is infidelity. As an apostate, demon-possessed, rejecter of the truth, he will not accept the truth for the truth speaks contrary to his personal feelings about the matter. Therefore, this woman who writes this book tells anybody who has the gift or feels like it to stand up when their time comes and talk. The Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost who wrote the book, the Holy Ghost who inspired the authors, the Holy Ghost who baptized Paul in the body of Christ, the Holy Ghost who filled him with the Holy Ghost and led his pen said, shut up. And if you don't like it, take your chance of disobeying God and get sick and then try to have enough faith to get healed. Page 136, quote, In our initial exuberance, a friend and I went ahead of the Holy Spirit witnessing about tongues in our own church, which believes in a separate experience of being filled with the Holy Spirit but stopped short of believing in tongues. We caused quite an uproar as a result that ended in bad feeling. However, there came a time when God began opening ways for us to share our experiences. God told me one morning to phone a young woman who had stopped coming to our church. That's the charismatic ministry. Get people to leave a church and let them get them together on the base of an emotional experience instead of the Word of God. That's the ministry. And that's why most charismatics have an affinity for the great old whore of Revelation 17. That mother of abominations and harlots, Revelation 17, is the charismatic rallying point for the Pentecostals, the Roman Catholic Church. They have an affinity for the great fornicating harlot of Revelation 17, the mother of abominations who is going to mix leaven in the bread, Matthew 13, to the whole is leaven. Because the one thing all Pentecostals have in, in common with Roman Catholics is rejection of the Bible as the final authority. 